Close your eyes, focus on the breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. And then again, all the way in, all the way out. Just try to stay here as consistently as you can, because you want to observe things going on in the present moment. In some cases, you do things and the results are immediate. In other cases, they appear only after, over time. So you want to be here all the time, so you can see connections. And you also learn how to exert some skillful control over the breath. There are so many things in life that we cannot control. Even in our bodies, there are so many things we, can, we cannot control. You can't tell the body to stay young. You can't tell it not to be injured. You do your best to avoid injury, but there are times when it's just going to happen. And no matter how much they've tried to keep people from getting old, it still keeps happening over and over and over again. But there are some things you can control, and you want to make the most of that fact. You can control your breathing. You can make it long, you can make it short, fast, slow, heavy, light, deep or shallow. Try to feel, see what feels good right now. You can experiment. And you can watch, because you also want to get control over your mind. And this is, of course, more important than control over the breath, because the mind is the forerunner of all things. And if it's running around in strange places, doing strange things, then the results are going to be strange, not necessarily what you want. But if you keep it focused, learn how to develop your mindfulness to keep reminding yourself to stay here and being alert to watch over what's actually happening, and then being ardent and trying to do this well, then you gain some measure of control over your mind. As Buddha said, you can get it to think what you want to think and not think when you don't want to think. All too often our thoughts are in charge of us, but we should learn how to be in charge of them. That way we can take the, the few potentials that we do have for control and we learn how to use them well. We're not control freaks. We try to be control sages. In other words, learn how to exit, exert wise control over our breath, wise control over the mind. So you can see if the mind is heading off in an unskillful direction, you can bring it back. If it's heading in a skillful direction, you can encourage it. In this way, you can develop the path, a path inside the mind that leads to a good place place where there's no suffering. And at that point, the issues of control or not control don't come into, it, come into it, because the end of suffering is the end of suffering. Total happiness, total well-being. The reason we try to exert control to begin with is because we want well-being. Our mistake is that we try to exert control over things we cannot control, and we abandon the things that we could learn how to control which is why we don't meet with the happiness that we want. But if you learn how to control the proper things and control them in the proper way, and as for things you can't control, just let them, let them go, then you can find a way to happiness. It's a skill that you can develop. So learn how to be with the breath as consistently and as comfortably as you can. Think of the breath as a whole body process, and the whole body feels nourished by the breath. And that way you're using your desire for control and pointing in a useful direction.